Hello friends, this video is going to be dipping into theological and even conspiratorial grounds. An article from Bounding Into Comics titled, Predictably the Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, Executive Producer Calls Critics Racist, addresses the ongoing Rings of Power fiasco, but there's something hidden within this disastrous response by the executive producers that I want everyone to fully understand. And I'm going to get a little heavy here, but bear with me. First, I must ask my dear audience, have you ever heard of the phrase, the Hegelian dialectic? If you haven't, it's going to be of profound importance to understand before I continue, because the subject matter in which I wish to discuss fundamentally relies on the Hegelian dialectic. To put it bluntly, the Hegelian dialectic can be defined as problem, reaction, Solution. How does the Hegelian dialectic work, you might ask? Good question. This is how it works in three easy steps. One, you create a problem. Two, you hypothesize or plan for a certain reaction to occur. And three, then you present the solution, your solution, for the problem that you created to begin with. Now, I won't bore you with too much of the specifics, but suffice it to say that the process originated from Marxism. Now, what does this have to do with the Rings of Power, you might be asking? Well, that's when things get a little bit more interesting. You see, the Rings of Power and Star Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi, according to the article I'm about to read, both suffer from the same symptoms. And those symptoms are the creators lashing out at the fans when they're supposed to be enticed into watching the show, but are instead ridiculed and called names. Let's read a quote from the article I previously mentioned. And I quote, The company, that company being Disney, used actress Moses Ingram to try and gin up a controversy by accusing Star Wars fans of racist behavior. This was after Ingram revealed she had, and get this, been coached by Lucasfilm to deal with a racist backlash. Continuing on with the article, she told The Independent, it was something that Lucasfilm actually got in front of and said, this is a thing that, unfortunately, likely will happen, but we are here to help you. You can let us know when it happens. Do you see how the Hegelian dialectic was used? If not, I will gladly break it down. Here's a screenshot I made to make it easier for everyone to understand. Problem. Intentionally misrepresent the literature and or lore. Reaction. Wait for the negative reaction from the fans. Solution. Call them, and in this case us, racist and homophobic. Again, just to make sure what I am saying is abundantly clear, I will reemphasize what's happening. 1. First, Amazon perverts the lore and injects identity politics into literature where it doesn't belong. They do this knowingly. This is planned. Two, then they wait for the fans to react, and they know the reaction will be the fans pointing out the identity politics that they are forcing into the lore. And three, finally, they tell their actresses to call us racist, as soon as they see our reaction. I must stress that these people in Hollywood, and Amazon, are not stupid. These are not unintelligent people. These are evil people. Let that distinction be made. The funny part is, their little tricks aren't working anymore. If the 1.9 million downloads is any indication, they are truly losing their grasp on how to properly propagandize people successfully. But there's one more aspect of this craziness that I wanted to share. Did anyone else find it weird that every time Sophia talks about her character, it is usually followed up by Dwarf of Kala? Why does she always emphasize this obvious inconsistency with the lore of Lord of the Rings? Because that's a part of the Hegelian dialectic. She knows her Dwarf of Kala is not canonical, but she continues to sear that into our minds. Why? She's waiting for us to tell her that her role is wrong. She's waiting for us to say, 
There are no dwarfs of Kala in Lord of the Rings. That way, she can claim racism. That's the system. That is the process in play. To put everything into perspective, the usual Hollywood smear campaigns used to work. Think back to only 10 years ago when Hollywood's job was easy. Make unnecessary and totally non-canonical changes to the lore, wait for us to rebel against the obvious identity politics, and then label us as unsympathetic, unfeeling, racist bigots. That plan used to work. It doesn't anymore because they because there are far too many people, like us, like you and me, who have grown weary of the same tactics and attacks upon normal people. Like I've said before in previous videos, if you think the backlash for the Rings of Power is bad, wait until they attempt to pervert Narnia. The response to Lord of the Rings is merely a drop in the ocean, compared to the utter decimation that Hollywood would suffer after perverting Narnia. And would you like to know why? Because not only would Hollywood have to deal with all of nerdum, which is true, but they would also have to deal with the entirety of Christendom. To put it bluntly, that would be suicide. They've already altered The Witcher, The Wheel of Time, and now Lord of the Rings. They're going to go after Narnia next. It's only a matter of time. Race and gender swapping Jadis the White Witch into a drag queen, or turning Aslan into a human-animal-non-binary transsexual hybrid is something they would totally do. The good news is, these people are losing. So keep it up, fam. Keep up the good work. And keep hounding these sick, morally bankrupt Marxist frauds whenever they get mischievous. And while you're at it, have fun.